Hi, okay. I'm Dylan. And I'm John. And today we're going to be determining the chemical equation for the decomposition of potassium chlorate. Alright, so we're going to do this by measuring the volume of the water displaced by the oxygen given off by the reaction. The number of moles given off by the known mass of potassium chlorate is going to indicate the mole ratios between the reactants and the product. Okay, so for this lab we're going to need a Bunsen burner, a large test tube, an iron ring stand, a thousand milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and beaker to go along with it, um, two stoppers, one of the stoppers with two inserts and another stopper with one insert for the test tube, and some tubing to connect it all. And of course the potassium chlorate. Okay, so uh, first we're going to uh, weigh out about two grams of the potassium chlorate into our uh, scale as shown. And uh, be careful not to let the potassium chlorate touch the paper or uh, your skin because it's quite reactive. And that's what it will look like. Once we have it. Um, so before you put the compound in the large test tube, you're going to want to weigh it out first because we'll be weighing the finished product afterwards. So make sure your scale is zeroed and weigh it out. So I'm getting the two grams of potassium chlorate that we weighed out and pouring it into our test tube using a funnel so I don't burn my skin. That's in there. Make sure you have all the powder in by shaking it out a bit. And now we're ready. There we go. Ah, look at that flame. Okay. Okay, so as the potassium chlorate is being heated, it's uh, producing oxygen gas, and that's building the pressure in this large test tube we have, and uh, pushing gas out into our Erlenmeyer flask over here. And so, when the Erlenmeyer flask has more gas being pushed in here, it, uh, in, re in return, displaces water and pushes it into our large beaker and there we'll be able to measure the volume of water displaced by oxygen. So when you first start heating the material, you want to make sure to um, pick up the Bunsen burner and sort of you know, evenly distribute the heat throughout the sample. You don't want it just burning on the bottom at first. And uh, it's going to start to slowly melt. Notice how Dylan holds the Bunsen burner making sure not to burn my hands or change the flow of oxygen or gas. It's very important to keep clear of the flame when you're picking up the Bunsen burner like this. You don't want to burn your eyebrows. At this point, uh, it's bubbling at a much faster rate. So a lot more gas is being produced and in turn, a lot more uh, water is being displaced in our Erlenmeyer flask. So we're about done here. As you can see, the solid that was in there has now been replaced by this hard, crusty solid. And now not much gas is being produced. And uh, we're going to let the system cool for about five minutes. Um, so after the system is cooled, we're going to uh, equalize the pressure of the Erlenmeyer flask with the rest of the room. And so we uh, break the vacuum that we formed by uh, removing the stopper from the tube and then holding the water levels in the Erlenmeyer flask and the beaker equal and then removing the tube from the beaker. This will be the total volume of gas, evidently, displaced from the Erlenmeyer flask. We're going to measure this in a one liter graduated cylinder. We're just going to pour it into our one liter graduated cylinder. So 
after we uh, take our product in our test tube, we're going to weigh it a second time to determine the new weight.